Welcome back to the program. Now, think American sport, and I suspect uh, one of these that uh, is going to come up behind me is what you immediately springs to mind, uh, either baseball or American football, uh, but uh, it is ingrained in the DNA of the nation. So my next guests are trying to break that mould. They're the stars of USA Rugby Sevens team. America hosts the World Cup in San Francisco in July. Well, they're waiting to talk to me the other side of the studio. A documentary is being filmed about the team in the build-up to that tournament, which is being described as make or break for the sport. Have a look. Sevens is the door upon which we can grow the game in America. It's just all about inspiring and being able to help others. So that's why I do it. Gary Baker, nice and high. The FD. Look at that slow mo. Sears it all. Look at the pops he's got. We're a startup company. We like the apple in the garage. And that's what they love because then they love to see the beast it becomes. Come on, come on. In general, no one really knows who we are. Like, like literally no one. I love that. Well, here in the studio is the USA Sevens captain, Madison Hughes, uh, the player, Carlin Isles, and coach, Mike Friday. Thanks, all of you, for being here on the programme. Uh, Madison, let me start with you. And, and that bit at the end, uh, anonymous. I mean, is that really the case? If you walk down the street in, in the States, no one really knows who you are? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think I can count on the one hand the number of times I've been recognised in public. At rugby events in the US, it's slightly different. There's definitely a cult following for rugby. And when you go to r those rugby events, people get really excited about it, really engaged in the sport. But in general, we're pretty anonymous. <laughs> Colin, I, I mean, what, the obvious question, I mean, why don't you play American football? I mean, you are the <laughs> fastest uh, rugby player there is on this planet, aren't you? Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's a blessing. But um, I, mean, I grew up playing football. And once I got my hands on a rugby ball, oh, my God, there was no sport like it. And I was like, man, why didn't, why didn't I discover this earlier in my life? And I think when I was younger, Somebody mentioned rugby, but I'm like, get my teeth knocked out? Nah, I'm cool. <laughs> so I just stuck with, with football and track. And once I really got involved in rugby, oh, my God, it's it's, it's a phenomenal sport. And just tell our viewers how fast you are. If you did 100 metres, what, what is it? Because I read an extraordinary stat on you a little yeah, earlier. Yeah, um, 100 metres is 10 one, three, So That, that would have got you to the semi-finals at, at London 2012, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Mike, I mean, how good are this lot? I mean, you've got uh, such coaching pedigree, uh, England in the past, Kenya in the past. I mean, how good are these guys? They're great. I mean, they're, they're exceptional rugby players. They're exceptionally exceptional athletes. And that's what you talk about in the, in the American sporting landscape, athletes. But what these guys have, have worked extremely hard on uh, and had to catch up quickly is that rugby EQ, that rugby intelligence that we take for granted in the, in the kind of everyday rugby uh, fraternity between the ages of 12 and 18 where these guys are playing football they're playing basketball they're playing baseball they're on track and field so which bits don't they know then in terms of that sort of just being in the DNA we're talking well, about DNA it's American just football. being able to make the rugby decisions the open decision making and, and recognize what's in front of you and do that on the hoof and that comes with experience and and, and repetition in those golden years of 12 to 18 when you're at your, your height of your learning and in our country, in the country of the UK or New Zealand, where it's kind of part of their DNA, they're exposed to it. The boys have had to work hard at that. And, you know, that's, that's the area, if we can position the sport, and that's the opportunity for, for these guys to be role models, to position the sport in the high schools and be that credible alternative, then, then we're on to Well, something. I'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but, Colin, you touched on it in terms of, you know, why didn't I discover this earlier? There was another bit in, in your video where one of your teammates says, you know, if you're playing in American football, you can make diagonal runs. But, you know, when you play rugby, everyone's a quarterback. That's how you described it. And this is what we play in the backyard. Is that how it was with, with you? Just a, a freedom, almost, with, with this form of rugby? Yeah, it's a freedom. Um, it's an open field. I mean, it's a lot of decision-making on the fly. Um, but you really get to go out there and just, just be you and be yourself, just like you're playing backyard football. And that's one thing that um, in football and any other sport, it's like, it's program. You've got to run this route. You have to do this. And then in rugby, it's kind of not like that. You're able to express yourself and, be, and, and play freely. Madison, how did you get into it? Because, I mean, you've gone on. You've been to the Olympics, you captain USA, you know, you will cap them into the, the World Cup. I mean, that's an extraordinary turn of events. How did you first start? So I grew up in England, so that was where I got my start. And I mean, it's really different for every guy on the team. Like, we've got guys who started playing in college, so between the ages of 18 to 22, guys who started later. 
I was lucky I started at seven, so I, I've been playing my whole life. But for guys like Colin, I think you started at like 23, so something like yeah. that. So a lot of guys who've picked it up later, and I think it's, as Mike said, you've got to work harder at that stage to gain the rugby intelligence and that decision-making ability. Uh, you've got the World Cup coming up, but before we talk about that, I just want to play another clip from that uh, documentary that uh, is being spliced together in the build-up to that tournament. Have a look at this. I mean, we won a cup before. That's never been done. You know, we made it to the Olympic Games when we wasn't even supposed to be there. Like I said, if we win the World Cup, it would be phenomenal. Like, what is there for the USA 7s Eagles team to do that they said we couldn't do? Barrett says, see you later. See you later, Mike. Uh, in the blurb for the documentary, it says uh, the Sevens team have one more roll of the dice. Success in the World Cup and the sport could rocket into the mainstream. Fail and it may be the last chance uh, in terms of a generation that might not come again. I mean, is it that stark, do you think? It's probably not that dramatic, but I think what we have this summer is a real opportunity to, to bring the sport to the forefront in America. You know, first time on American soil, a world rugby event, and we'll be one of the form teams. We've got a chance, we've got an opportunity in the American sporting landscape. In America, they love winners, and the Olympics is, a, is close to the heart of the, uh, of the sporting landscape. And I think, again, that ticks a big box for, for the sporting public. That, again, if we can position it and get it to, to build and grow, then that opens the door globally for the likes of China, who often follow America on those type of Olympic platforms, to then make this game truly global and put, reposition sevens and the game and of rugby. And try and get that. it into schools. Yeah. Colin, have you let yourself think and dream of what it would be like to actually win this thing back home on home soil? I mean, yeah, I do. And I think um, we get a taste of it, of it a little bit, like when we won Vegas. So we kind of know what the feeling is. It's about now just trying to execute and um, trying to bring that feeling back over and over again. Madison, I just want to put it into perspective. Uh, just remind me what you guys earn and what a quarterback would earn. <laughs> remind me how many people turn up to watch you, how many people turn up to fill, say, the Eagles stadium. Give me a real sense of what it's like on the ground. <laughs> I mean, in terms of numbers, it's just not even close. I mean, those guys earning millions upon millions of dollars a year, mm. having hundreds of thousands of people come out and watch them. And I mean, we get big crowds sometimes, us and 16 other teams, should, hoping to fill Twickenham this weekend, so that'll be fun. But I mean, in terms of the difference between what those NFL guys, MLB, um, those guys are earning, it's, yeah, it's a different strategy. You can dream. You can we, dream of winning <laughs> and dream of perhaps changing the, one, the, the backdrop. One day, maybe, one day. That's what we're trying to be pioneers for everyone else. Can I come back, uh, Colin, just a final thought? Because, of course, with American football, you've had this whole controversy around the national anthem and, and kneeling. Uh, you've got new rules going to come in, which uh, is preventing players actually kneel on the pitch during the national anthem for the season ahead and, and talks of boycotts. I mean, what do you think of the new rules and what do you guys do? So for us as a team, man, we're just all about, you know, our pride and, and wearing our jersey and what we stand for as a, as a, as a group, um, as a team. And so when we really don't really nail it. We're about all the outside distractions, but we're about what's, what we can control and why we're stepping on that field. And we step in the floor for the U.S. and we step in it, we're, and we're stepping on there for ourselves. So it's, it's more than what people are making it out to be. It's all about perspective, and you have a, and we have our own perspective. So, when we stand and we're in that final and we're holding each other, <clears throat> we know that man, we're doing this for the USA and we're doing it for each other, because it takes a brotherhood to, to, to make something great. Madison, just a quick final thought, because uh, uh, Mike earlier is saying they, you hope to get it into to schools for youngsters you come across. I mean, how keen are they? You know, there's no gear. You just get out there, you play. How keen are they in in, in this game? I mean, I think so keen, and, and it's been really fun to see, to play with kids and see more and more American youths getting into rugby, being exposed to it at an earlier age. And I think, as Colin mentioned earlier, when people get on the field and they're like, wow, I get to run with the ball and make tackles and make decisions, like, it's all the best parts of all the different sports people play in the U.S. all blend into one and crushed together and kind of thrown out and given for everyone to enjoy. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure talking to all three of you. Thank you so much for yeah, coming in and good luck in that World Cup uh, in July when it uh, comes up.